Trayvon Atabaki. No, try to spell that one out, right? Um, business is Functional Fitness VA. Like prominent okay, man, right? perfect. Um, <laughs> and we're a small uh, personal training and small group exercise studio. Okay. Um, and we offer people workouts. Um, a little more in depth than that, but like our tagline is move better, get stronger. Mm -hmm. And so we offer like normal people workouts to help them better in life. Uh, not to say we don't like help people get stronger for specific things, like mm -hmm. well, I'm a baseball player or whatever, but like everyone's a human first. Yes. And so, like, moving a little better, getting a little stronger. Yeah, that makes sense. should help everyone, right? Yeah. Um, and can you tell me, I want to know more specifics about what types of, um, I guess, programs you offer mm -hmm. in there, just so for our listeners to get a better yeah. idea. Um, so, like, personal training-wise, it's kind of fit to the user or fit to the client, right? Um, we have our kind of model that we bring in, but because, you know, we're all humans, so we all move kind of the same, but we're all different through life and all that stuff. Um, so that's the personal training side. It's very personal. Uh, as far as the classes go, currently we offer 19. That could be off by one or two, but no, I'll wow. give myself a little room for everything. Um, classes, our flagship like product or class is a kettlebell class because mm -hmm. um, that's our favorite tool. Uh, it is just that. It's a tool, so it's more about the person than the tool by itself, but it's a great tool to use for a number of things, whether it's mobility, strength, uh, cardiovascular fitness. So it's kind of one thing that everyone can use in relatively short order. That's why that's our like most used thing and biggest class. Mm -hmm. uh, recently added some, there's a race series called High Rocks. Yeah, it's new. Okay, um, I was gonna say, it's I'm not new. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> it's German and started in Europe like three years ago. It's here in the US, this is like its first full calendar year. Um, we become affiliates of it and so it's basically just doing hard stuff. Um, Sounds so fun. Right. <laughs> well, it's like Spartan Race, a lot of people don't like doing those. If you're familiar with those, or Tough Mudders, because they're muddy. Yeah. Or, and you have to drive like three hours to get to the get muddy to, field, yeah. right? <laughs> you drive to this muddy field to get muddy and you're miserable. <laughs> yeah. These are a little like more accessible. Like the one most recently was in the uh, convention center downtown DC, mm -hmm. and no one got muddy. So that's a kind of a barrier for some people, because sound here and, or stand here and go like everyone in their heart wants to do hard stuff <laughs> but kind of like you should yeah. <laughs> and if you're working out anyway yes you know then it's, then kind of the, everyone wants to measure a test mm -hmm. at some point like this is great and all but am I fitter right so there's certain ways you can measure in the gym but it's a little more fun at times to measure it like a special thing so Absolutely. that's like this high rocks thing so we've added a couple classes for that then we have a couple classes where we just keep pe get people moving. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the obligatory, like, boot camp classes, which I kind of hang my head. Uh, <laughs> but it's not like we're, we're not sitting there screaming at people. <laughs> that's what um, I'm thinking in my head. Come on. Yeah, that's 50, what, give me 50 right now. Everyone, when they hear boot camp, they're like, oh, early, uh, miserable, and someone's screaming at me. And we'll check one of those. It'll be early. Like, it's 6 a.m., uh, which we had someone ask for a 5 a.m. class, so I guess early is relative. <laughs> they love it. Um, yeah. The, the answer was no. Um, <laughs> But uh, we try to keep like the classes relatively light. Again, we're not, generally speaking, a person that walks through our door isn't looking to like maximize top level fitness, and that's a great thing. Yeah. You know, if someone wants to pursue that, that's fantastic. We can certainly at times do that. There are other places that specialize in that. We're more, and it's not like a lackadaisical approach. It's just you don't need to die in the gym to see benefits outside of the gym. So, I love that you said that. <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of with CrossFit, which has its pros and cons. Yes. And, yes. It's great that people started picking up more weight, and CrossFit was a big kind of reason for that. Mm -hmm. But then also with that came the belief of like, if you don't leave everything in the gym, what'd you even come here for? Oh. And that's a bit of an exaggeration. But a lot of people think that. They yeah. come in and they're like, oh, I could have done harder. And like, I'll see you tomorrow, though. All right, 5 a.m. We, we live in, no. Six. <laughs> Six. Yeah, we kind of live by a saying, one of 500 sayings, like the most important workout and it's easy to say is the one you do, yes. But since you're here doing a workout, the most important workout is tomorrow's workout. Because if you kill it today, but you're crippled tomorrow because of that, mm, you know, that's, that's okay like once every a year, once every six months. Yeah. You need to like push it hard, or you come in with a chip on your shoulder because of life, sure. But generally speaking, your workout should be kind of difficult and recoverable. So that you can come back tomorrow or in two days because it's frequency that really yeah. gets people there. So. 
That's a long-winded answer for No, thank you. We'd, lo we'd love to know all the details and like, hmm, does that work for me? Is that for me? So I am trying to sell you. So No, you it works. Soon. No, I'm just kidding. It did not. Boot camp. And <laughs> I'm kidding. No. <laughs> You're good. Miserable but not miserable? Yeah. But kind of miserable? I'm in that in-between where I'm just like, oh, I want to work so hard. But I was like, no, I don't. Which, and again, like the, the two major... Like money, time, those are the big constraints for people getting started. Mm -hmm. But then the obstacles that people have in the way a lot of time, just kind of touch on it because you said it, yes. is, is like, if I don't do an hour, was it even worth it? Or again, if I don't go super hard, was it even worth it? Yes is the answer. That's the <laughs> easy and like the right answer. A five minute workout is better than zero minute workout. That's true. Right? Do 10 push ups. Cool. Go on. The rest of your day, you know, you, you accomplish something <laughs> I physical. I feel embarrassed with myself because I know sometimes I'm like that, but. But that's common. And it's not like when I say that to people or when we say that to people, other people, you know, kind of have that realization like, well, what, did it help though? Yes. Did you get hurt? No. Mm -hmm. Then it helped. Right. And uh, most people don't think that because it's been packaged, whether it's the industry or just people's preconception mm -hmm. that like, if I don't do a full workout, then I should. Should have just waited. Yeah. Yeah, that works every once in a while. Like, yeah, all right, you did that today because today was hectic. Mm -hmm. Cool, life. But if that's every day's reason that you don't work out, sneak in where you can. There's, I'm stealing a phrase. I'll steal a bunch of phrases from other people. Please do. Um, <laughs> I'll attribute it to myself. Um, is movement snacks or like exercise snacks. Because like. You like little tidbits? Little bit, tidbits. And there's benefit to those. It, has its limitations, right? Are you going to get a great cardiovascular benefit from like doing five jumping jacks three times a day, spread out by four hours? Probably not. But are you going to get a little better movement if every time you stand up from your desk before you go, you know, for whatever it is, you do a little mini hamstring stretch or door jam stretch? Yeah, that'll help. And it also will like make you realize you've been sitting like this for nine hours or whatever it is, right? Um, phone, computer, yep. car. Clock uh, me right there. Right. Uh, <laughs> And the same thing with like strength stuff. If every time you stand up or you have a little timer set for every 90 minutes, do three push-ups, one push-up, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you'll get benefit from that. And it's just, again, it's not a workout. Um, like it's little tidbits. Tidbits here and there, snacks throughout the day. Just like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. Do I want a meal? No. I want a little snack. Great. I feel like doing Your body's talking <laughs> to you, right? Your body's like, move, yeah. do something. Yeah. Me watching TV, I want a snack. Yeah, do but some push-ups. But not that snack. Right? I mean, do the push-ups. That's funny. And, no, I love that. And like for each person, it could be different because say people with tight hips, your movement snack is do a hip flex stretch, march through your living room or your workplace as a sidebar. The amount of people that are like, I don't want to do that because I'll look weird. Like, <laughs> first off, we're all weird. Yeah. yeah. Let's get that out of the way. And two, if your weirdness makes you healthier, then... Then be weird. Well, yeah. Be, uh, again, stealing a phrase from another guy. Be the weirdo. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe like... Three people in your office go, I can do that, right? And now you've done a cultural change. You've changed. Like, you yeah. did it. <laughs> I just love being that. weird. <laughs> but, no, but. Yeah, people come in with that preconceived notion again. Like, oh, stretching's weird if I do it in the office. It has to only be done at the gym. See, but now that you've got that right. out of the way and people heard it here, I'm going to do it and I'm not going to do it. Exactly. Thank you're you You're welcome, that. world, for yeah. uh, <laughs> the way I just changed the culture. Exactly. And now... Tell me your story. Like, who were you as a kid? A lunatic. Let's get that. <laughs> I mean, that part was... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. I met yeah. you. I understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, how has growing up... Has that impacted to where you are today? Any influence? Uh, I mean, tons. Um, for better or for worse. Uh, like, as it pertains to the business and, like, my career, what I've chosen. Like, I was always an active kid. I... I dropped the ball on this question in front of a group of Boy Scouts one time. The, the scout leader was like, so tell the kids, like, have you always been this? And I was just like, I've always been active. Yes, is the answer. Um, but what he was saying was like relatively fit. And there's a number of kids that were varying levels of fitness. Yeah. I've always been active, but the road to get stronger, like, doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. The road to get more fit, whatever, you know, reach the pinnacle of fitness, which I'm far from. Um, but being active and exercising, working out, doing things like that has always been part of my life. So have I been great at it? Eh, probably not. Like sports, definitely not that good. But played a bunch growing up. Um, had an older brother who, when I was like 12, he uh, was 16, and uh, of course he was the greatest human on the planet to me. Um, he's not. He's a jerk. Oh, um, no. <laughs> you hear that, bro? <laughs> but he, uh, giant arms, right? And he started doing bicep curls and whatnot, and I just thought like, well, 
I need to do that because <laughs> that's the coolest thing First ever. And, ever. <laughs> and there it was, 12 years old, started lifting weights and uh, just kind of did it as exercise, like help sports, help you look good. Mm -hmm. um, and then somewhere in my early 20s, through another job, someone just kind of was like, hey, can you train me? I was like, train you? <laughs> I mean, why don't you do my workout? And that just kept kind of happening um, with a, a few people and through, because I grew up real shy, mm -hmm. which obviously, right, I don't like talking or anything. You're on <laughs> um, a podcast now, like, go you. <laughs> There's no one here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, which is when I tell people that, they're like, you can't get you to shut up. So oh, how was that? Um, <laughs> half truth. Uh, but through working at a restaurant, which is where I was working when that happened, like, you have to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And if you're bad at it, you don't get as good a tip, right? Yeah, service good, but also some sort of personality helps. Mm -hmm. um, so I just took that learned skill, if you will, um, and brought it into personal training. Because, again, I definitely was, like, kill people early on. <laughs> you're here to work out, you're here to die. Um, <laughs> but, My God. <laughs> Me um, walks out to nope. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It, no, no. It's a combination. The amount of people that stuck with me early on in my training career, no, I want to like call, reach out to them, and be like, by the way, I appreciate that because I definitely was just murdering you. <laughs> uh, you should have left. What's wrong with you? No. Um, it's evolved now to be again much more intelligent, sensible, but <laughs> also doing a workout doesn't mean people like you stop. Like it's not a robot giving a workout. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff that's come out recently, tonal. Uh, Tonal tempo, and there's a third one that are like AI driven. One of them, like, you can actually interface with a person, Whoa. and that's great. They're actually really, I hate to say this is gonna ruin my career, but they're good products. Like, I've worked with someone who has a tonal at home, and it, it's pretty darn good. Wow. But it misses the human touch, mm -hmm. which this industry is a human industry. So, at that point, bringing in kind of that humanity, we're all humans, but mm -hmm. into the workout so people could enjoy more than just like do your sets, do your reps. Now, like, let's chit chat a little bit. We got a minute and a half of rest. I'm just going to sit here and stare at the floor. So I guess people don't mind my presence, as much as we'll say no, there. because like, 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 have a chat and socialize, yeah. too. Like, what if you, will, like, are having trouble making friends? Like, yeah, you have your little tonal thingy, which is great. You get your workouts. But you could make a friend, and by meeting you, you could connect with other people in yeah. your studio and like, hey, this person does this so and so, or they're having trouble with this. You're really good. Get to know. Like, it, you build a community, which I think you can't really do with the, the AI stuff. But it's great. Yeah, it works for. It checks a box for exercise. Yes. But I feel like if I were to do that, I want to be around people who will help influence me in a positive way to try to mo uh, motivate me to continue to do it. Whereas if I do it with an AI, like. It's cool, but you don't have that motivation. I don't really, I've never used it. I don't know if it's like, good job, keep going. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it's very robotic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. They're probably better than that. They're cool sounds. Like, yeah. bling, um, okay. achievement. Uh, well, <laughs> but to that point, after the early part of my career working in other gyms, um, myself and my original co-founder, business partner, we kind of developed a little subset in the gym mm -hmm. uh, of just that, kind of building a culture. Um, took a, like a, continued education thing years ago where a guy did a presentation and it was like how to build a gym and in parentheses it was cult and then sure <laughs> um, it was okay. kind of right like, uh, <laughs> funny <laughs> um, but we noticed then mm -hmm. that just the the culture we were building of whether it's the type of exercises or just the personalities um and we kind of took a small room in the gym and made it ours uh, which made the gym money so it's not like it was a stealing something but it was a gym I wasn't questioning that it was, <laughs> we just took it and took it over <laughs> um, but they did have other designs for it but we made it into our little like personal training space and it worked because we were the uh, like most productive trainers there mm -hmm. hours wise and then we had our little subculture uh, and that was both good and bad because when we left the gym the subculture went with us um, but we started noticing then like people talk to each other like we could remove ourselves from the conversation a little bit. You know, we did an introduction, like-minded clients. They start talking to each other. And in a space like what we have now where we're doing classes of 10, 12, 14 people, mm -hmm. and most of them are very similar in a lot of ways, um, they start developing friendships and interacting and doing things that build the culture without us. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, we just had a number of clients take a trip to Vegas together. What? Uh, yeah, which... This is the place to go, people. Right. Um, they did that. I had nothing to do with that. Never but been you to helped Vegas. started it. You, you kind of, you know. Yeah, bring people together. Um, <laughs> but th that's just it. Like the atmosphere we build there. 
Um, and this just gets back to that human element. Like we're, uh, what's, yeah, I'm drawing a blank on the word. Uh, connected community. We're all connected. No, yeah, we're social creatures. Yes. Like you know, there's no lone wolf. There is great, cool, but like something deep inside us wants to be around and yes, talk to other I people, um, like this. Mm -hmm. Right, make some connections. Uh, and then some are good, some are bad, some, all right, that wasn't worth it, get rid of it. But in the gym and the atmosphere we have with people working hard together, doing similar exercises, experiencing similar things, they start to develop mm -hmm. a good bond. Um, yeah. And that just builds the culture. And that's, you know, on the purely number side, like, good, now they never leave. Um, but <laughs> on this thing, I, my numbers are terrible. So on the side where we are, that just like makes for a better atmosphere, people having fun, exercising. People being a little miserable together makes it a little less miserable, right? Um, so I know we went down the winding road from like no, no, where no. I started, um, but once in this this industry, the success that we've had is yeah, I think I give good workouts. I think we give good workouts, right? Um, but also like letting people have fun, yes. letting people be like vulnerable is the wrong word, but be themselves. Uh, have a, a yeah. place where they can go and just build their muscle, but also have a place where they feel comfortable enough to do that and talk to people. Being comfortable, yeah. yeah. That's a huge thing. Especially like if someone walks into any gym for the first time, no matter the atmosphere, it's an uncomfortable situation. It may be a little, like, not that uncomfortable, but it's still a little bit, right? Um, yeah. It's foreign, it's new, even if, like, I'm a gym person, I'm a gym bro. I've done it my whole life. Gym I've been bro. in a bunch of gyms, right? <laughs> but a new gym I go to, especially if it's one that's a little, you know, has its shtick, if you will, like, ooh, yeah. it's a kettlebell gym, like, Am I going to be good enough at the kettlebell stuff for them to? So the more that we can do in the atmosphere that we create and the clients there yeah. uh, at our place can uh, help make that easy. Yeah, right. no, that's awesome because I feel like when I go into them, I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, people are going to judge me. They're going to laugh. Like, is <laughs> she even using that, right? Like, look at this. Like, and now if people, like, film me at gyms and stuff sometimes, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to make it to the, the viral thing because she's, like, doing it backwards or something. Like, Am I going to be on one of those pages exactly. on Instagram? Exactly. No, but that's great that you've provided that for your clients and that they have a comfortable, safe space where they can, you know. Well. Safe, not safe. Safe. Like someone asked me, they're like, this is a safe space, right? I'm like, no chance. I'm going to make fun of you. But here's but, the good news. I'm going to turn around and probably trip over a kettlebell, and you're supposed to laugh at me. Exactly. Right? And so. have your phone out. No, just kidding. Um, now, in regards to that, can you tell me a little bit about how you're marketing your business out there? Are you, is it more word of mouth? Are you on Instagram? Are you, do you have a website that you're just like promoting out there? Uh, I mean, number one. Poorly would be the answer. <laughs> At <laughs> um, least you're honest. <laughs> what, uh, I've heard a million things, but someone's like, you know, the, the worst proponent of your business is you, where you should be the biggest proponent and yes. do the most. Um, but yeah, we do all the things, just do them not great. Uh, our biggest and best thing is, again, our clients. So mm -hmm. in any personal service business, right? Any personal service business, you got to give people the service that they expect, want more so, I think. Like someone comes in and they want X, you give them X plus one, right? Whatever that may be. Um, and then they are your best marketing tool. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, uh, Jim comes in twice a week and he gets good workouts, he enjoys it, he has fun, he has good conversation, whatever that may be, he likes the atmosphere, he'll probably talk about the place. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have an Instagram page that is mostly dogs. Um, <laughs> we have two gym dogs, and so. Oh yeah, I did see that. Do yeah. they do workouts and stuff, or do they motivate people? Uh, I mean, are they just like around licking you, like, "Hey, good job." Mostly that. That's awesome. Uh, early, early on, when I got the two of them, because uh, like within a week of having them, they were in the gym. Uh, I did try to get the little guy, little cute, the cuter one, if you ask me, <laughs> Scrapple. He, I got him to start pulling kettlebells. Okay. Like, got a harness, like, because he had all this energy. He's a little, some sort of pit mix. He's a rescue. We don't know what he is. He's a mutt, but there's yeah. some pit in there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, like, they got a lot of energy. You need an outlet, just like, just like humans. You got a lot of energy. Yeah. Best to have an outlet. Um, so he was doing workouts, pulling a kettlebell. Okay. And as soon as we got the second dog, those workouts just disappeared. Really? Because while he was going to pull it, she would bark at him, then he'd get distracted. And, then, <laughs> and it's, I mean, it was too much work to do. I think they keep each other entertained now. Yeah, now he just chews on her neck. And oh, lovely. He just <laughs> <laughs> looks pathetic because he's chewing on her neck. Oh, man. Which entertains a lot of people. So that's another reason people come to the gym, Thank not you. for the workouts. They come for the dogs. That's really the honest. Yeah, I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> About 50% of our people come for the dogs and stay for the workouts. Aww. But so we do, you know, all social media things, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, 
the, our YouTube page is like just exercise tutorials. Good. Because another barrier of entry, if you will, or barrier uh, between exercising is, all right, you come to the gym once a week. That's great. Once a week is better than zero times a week, but you know what's better than once a week? One, two times a week. Right. You know what's better than two? Three. Probably three, right? There's a limit to it, like yeah. 10 times a week, too much. Yeah. Um, we have a couple clients who are like, do less. But that's rare. Um, <laughs> but if you can't afford to come in multiple times a week, like a lot of things, we just send like little workouts. All right, here's your workout. Do this twice a week, and a lot of times I'll have links to our videos because early on, again, people, mm -hmm. one of the rebuttals I got like, hey, did you do your homework? No, I didn't do my homework. Why? I didn't want to do the exercise wrong. Fair. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to waste your time if you're doing it all wrong. Now I have an exercise, a video tutorial. I'm sending it to you. Now you can't tell me that anymore. Not to say they were lying initially. No, no. But now that's you can. part of being a good coach and a leader as well. It's like keeping you accountable because you don't want someone to be like, no, that's fine. Don't worry about it because you won't see progress, right? Right. So that's that's great that you did that. And also, I think other people who are maybe looking for videos and stuff will also come into. Maybe it's reach happened into a your couple video. Times. Yeah. yeah. And it, well, and that's like, if Instagram's supposed to help funnel people in, we funnel like two in the 10 years we've been on Instagram. If YouTube would help for the business, anyway, again, if we're looking at pure numbers, if YouTube, the thing we could get from that is getting more people in the gym, it's happened like twice in having 13 years of having a YouTube page. Oh, wow. um, so those definitely, and I don't do the right things. I'm not optimizing all that stuff, uh, which certainly I could try to get better at. But again, most of my energy is just on giving great workouts, yeah. creating a great atmosphere, and then people do the work. It's just like friends ask, oh, hey, you're looking good. What have you been doing? You know, or, hey, I saw you post about this workout thing. What, what is that? Um, so the, our biggest marketing endeavor or effort is keeping our clients happy, and hopefully they'll talk about it. Um, yeah, networking. And yeah. Which I was recently told by another client who has his own business. He's like, you need to just ask. Ask people to talk about it because sometimes that's all that it takes. And I, again, I am bad at that. Oh. Um, so I just assume they'll do it themselves, which I'll plenty do, and that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but imagine the outreach you would have if you did if that I did as ask, well. Yeah, yeah, amazing. If I did a thing. It's okay. Um, <laughs> we all struggle with that one thing, trying to do it, and then we're like. But we do have, and we have a website that's functional. Um, it works. But. Uh, We've done some SEO optimization. We've done like Google Ads as a thing, just because you need some sort of online yes. traction and presence. And people, as much as a personal service business, I feel is best like getting someone in the door for a gym that's personal service mm -hmm. uh, usually requires some sort of personal touch. Mm -hmm. Usually, like a friend talking to me about yes. it, or we do a lot of uh, a fair amount of uh, like community events and outreach. There you let's go. Call it. That's awesome. Like so, we're at like the parade or something. Uh, with a booth or we're at the fall festival in Falls Church with a booth like with kettlebells and you got a bunch of big shiny kettlebells it draws a couple people like, like what's that weird thing yeah or if you got like a pull-up bar like try a pull-up or seven um that brings people in but also again that's it's just getting there to, to talk the human connection human connection oh, again and like take those fears off the table and they say like ooh, like I'm, you gonna kill me like, no we will not kill you number one like here's a video of us with some of our workouts um and also, the goal of each workout is just to get a little better. Yes. It's not like, at this workout, I expect you to be lifting twice your body weight. If that happens, great, and we can work towards that again. But small incremental growth is generally, especially in fitness, in life, um, what usually wins. I right? agree. It's the tur tortoise and the hare. Right? Yes. That turtle. That turtle keeps going. A um, little going. progress. Yeah. Um, so community events tend to be... a do well for us again just because of that human connection yeah. and make sure that it's understood what we do because mm -hmm. the cool the stuff that looks cool online is the crazy stuff like oh that's flipping a kettlebell well, that's nuts but also that's sometimes to yeah. a lot of like the general population like they'll be fringe psychos that are like i'm gonna flip a kettlebell with my teeth <laughs> uh, good for you um good for your dentist but uh the normal person wants to just come in work yes. kind of hard and leave without dying and be kind of happy yes. so like we got to that's where getting people to talk about it and us talking about it, and certainly we could do more on the social media yeah. side. I love that, that, and I love that you are aware of that too. Like, you got to do the Google CEO, all that. Yeah, like, and again, the client that was talking to me about uh, just asking our clients. Mm -hmm. to, Is that even to, smart? Thing? That's smart, and, and, he, and he certainly does a lot of things. He's a really good business guy. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you kind of have to do some of those other things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, 
got to make it so you have some sort of presence online. Mm -hmm. And if it costs a couple hundred bucks a month to do some Google AdWords every once in a while to bring up more traffic online, yeah. then that, you know, low barrier of entry. Mm -hmm. So we'll do things like that at yeah. times, but certainly yeah. you get a lot better. At and you know what's stuff. working for you too. And mm, so. It's a guess. <laughs> it's tough. But um, yeah, what's a common misconception that you have in your industry that you just like, I want to share with my listeners that it doesn't have to be this way or that's not true? Um, well, from like what the client, a client just misconception an, or? Yeah, a client misconception where they're, maybe they're feeling held back or intimidated by something. Uh, well, I mean that intimidation factor of like you get in the gym. Like the, the step one is this much of the way to step 10. And here's like step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Right? If people are thinking like, oh, how do I get to the fittest me? The first step is the, the most important one. Just start doing something, right? Like, mm -hmm. again, if it's three push-ups three times a day, three days a week, hey, easy rule to remember. Um, if it is, just go for walks. Like, people discredit the things that aren't whatever they're... In their mind, like, super intense. Fit. Yeah, Yeah. whether it's intense or not. And, and certainly a lot of times it is, like, just, oh, it needs to be super intense because the people that are getting the biggest traction online are, like, either the freak show bodybuilders, which, again, cool for you, um, not cool for everyone, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or like the super fit people, like the winners of the CrossFit Games, gymnasts, things like that, and like that's an extreme, and that that's the pinnacle, and that's fantastic. But the average person, a lot of times, will get discouraged, and, and not to say like, oh, they're watching gymnasts and yeah. assuming it's them. Everyone knows, hey, you're not an Olympic gymnast unless you're an Olympic gymnast. But even on a smaller scale, in your neighborhood, you're like, oh, the fit guy down the street, or the fit woman over there, like she's super fit, she works out every day. I'm just gonna walk. Mm -hmm. I'm a loser, or whatever that pre. That, no. Go do the walk. Walking is great for you, right? Anything's good for you as long as it doesn't hurt you, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's the barrier. Like, is it doesn't hurt, do it. Um, and no matter how small, do it. So that, like, what a lot of people come in assuming that the thing that they have the easiest access to or that they will do, like, yeah. doesn't check the box enough. Oh, it certainly does. Like, pick up that kettlebell a couple times a day. Five minutes of swings, you know, three deadlifts and a plank. Do it. Do it. Yeah, and right. you'll be better off for it. And then it, it's a snowball effect. Like that big step, it's easier to take the second step once you cross that big first step. Mm -hmm. right? Get in the gym, you'll then work out. And once you're working out for 10 minutes, you might go, huh, I'll do 15 or I'll do 20. Yeah. Right? So getting that first step out of the way is huge for people. And, and we've heard this a lot of times too where people go, I'm going to start training with you. I got to get a little, I got to get fit first. Or I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like you know, I understand the notion. Um, it's wrong. Uh, but if that's an intimidation thing, too. They're like, I can't. Oh, you'll kill me in my workout. Like, I, think, I don't think I will. Right? Um, certainly there's times where, like, oh, a workout gets a little too intense, where the stress is added up. Um, years ago, I was training a guy. Still train him. Uh, he still trains at the gym. Uh, but if he hears this, he'll be like, it's talking about me. Um, <laughs> shout out to you. Shout out to you. Not going to know any names. No. Nope. Um, and he came in. Had a relative pass away recently. Work was kicking his butt. Um, had, hadn't slept well because of work. Hadn't eaten that day, you know. And came in and was like late to his workout. And he wanted to hit it. And we hit it. And again, young trainer that I was, pushing him hard. Didn't see all the signs. Oh. He's here to work hard. And he passed out at the end of the workout. Yeah. Woke up in my arms, was brushing his hair. Right? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> it's okay. No, um, kind of sort of. But uh, like a lot of people think that's, one, they think that's the ultimate end. Like, if I come in and I'm out of shape, that's what's going to happen to me. Not if you're with a good trainer. That was a bad training move for me. Um, luckily, that was 15 years ago, so I've grown and since you then. Didn't, no, so it's kind of hard, right. you know? He didn't give me all the information, exactly. but also, yeah. So keep your trainer informed. Get into the gym. Do what you can do. If it feels too intense, back off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Again, that can't always be the response. Ooh, this is hard. I'm done. But every once in a while, it's fine. Don't push yourself that hard. Just do the thing. Um, so that misconception of if it isn't, again, X, or I'm not going because I'm not in shape, or people are going to laugh at me, whatever that, you know, you're scared of in working out or that's intimidating, mm -hmm. don't let that be the reason you're not working out. Okay. There can be other reasons. Life happens. But don't let the reason be uh, that you don't go to the gym be because I'm not blank mm -hmm. or it's not good enough. Get, get in there and do something. Nope. 
to do something. Right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> do something, right? Um, so yeah, I think that's the biggest misconception about the industry or fitness industry, gym industry, or gyms yeah. in general from like the common person. Mm -hmm. And if the gym, let's say, you know, a gym is that, then that's not the gym for you. Mm -hmm. Try again. Right? If then there are certainly gyms that are like, you don't come in the door here unless you're serious. Mm -hmm. And that that's great for them. That's the clientele they want yep. and they have maybe. Um, and if someone experiences that, like don't let that be the thing that stops you going from going to the next gym. Mm -hmm. Or trying to find a place in gym, exercise activity, because it doesn't have to be a gym. You can be in a dance club. You can go for hikes, right? That's There's true. all sorts of things. Yeah. Fitness is not this little box of lifting weights and stretching and running on it's a treadmill. It's a place for everybody yeah. somewhere all the time. And it, it's human movement. Like, yeah, fitness, functional fitness, right? Yes, but at its core, it's moving. So if we could just move you know, as a society, an individual um, could just move a little more, move a little better, move a little more often, right? You're That's probably right. going to be better off. Agreed. So. And then um, just to wrap things up here, um, if you could leave our listeners with one message, it could be in regards to gym industry, life, dogs, anything. <laughs> what would that message be? Um, shoot. That's gotta be wow, that's a lot of pressure. One thing. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, just I mean, do what you can. To, I would say do your best, but some days you don't have your best. Mm -hmm. Do what you can at that moment where you are, right? Whether that's for business growth, for fitness, for personal growth. I'm not an expert on uh, much, but um, if you do what you can, and you try relatively hard, right? So it is trying to get to your best. You'll be the, you'll give the best effort that you can in that day at that time where you are, and you're going to see growth, progress, benefits from it. You know, it can be as we can keep this as isolated to gym stuff. That same sentiment: get in the gym or get going, do something, right? Do what you can. Um, but that also pertains to work. I'm, that's something I have to tell myself all the time because I'm not good at office work. Um, I don't know if you picked up that as far as like marketing and whatnot. No, I, I, I wasn't like he's oh, not good at office. Oh, for stuff. sure, I'm <laughs> terrible at it. Uh, but I have to tell myself, and I'm this is something I have to tell myself every time when I sit down. I'm like, oh, here we go, got to do this <laughs> nine-hour project. You know what's the old saying? Like, how do you eat an elephant? I don't know that one. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. One bite at a time, right? Oh, um, so. okay. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> And you're like, when was the last time you chomped on some elephant? What are you doing? Oh, my but, gosh. But doing something, right? Yeah. That one bite is the first step in doing something. That me sitting down to do office work and going, all right, well, I got to do this audit for this insurance. Click the button first, bud. Like, I've already been intimidating myself. And that's my gym. Like, you know, people, that's the version of getting into the gym for me um, is click the button. Oh, wait a minute. This is pretty simple, right? <laughs> or this is hard, but I'm making progress. I'm clicking the button. Um, I'm clicking the button. All right, I'll fill in the next box. Yeah. Fill in the next box. Um, versus like, well, this is going to be a 19-hour prob uh, problem I got to solve, and I'm not good at it, mm -hmm. which, so why start, right? That's the same as like, oh, it's, I'm not going to get super fit in one day, so why start? Or I don't have time to be doing three hours. So like, do what you can, where you are with the time you have. So do something, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be my life speech right there. Thank you. And where can people find you? What's your website? Uh, website's uh, www.functionalfitnessva.com. Okay. So the name of our business without any spaces or anything. Okay. Um, again, website's not going to blow your socks off, but give you a way to contact us, show you kind of, it's got the links to our social media and a feed on there. Um, again, mostly dogs, but <laughs> it'll kind of give you like accessibility to, to our stuff. And we, I also have been doing this in this area for six, wait, hold on, let's do some math here, 18 years. Okay. Um, my business partner, he's been doing this for 26 years. Uh, we got some experts over here. Got some experts, but also I know some people. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, you know, someone in Loudoun that is like, well, Falls Church, not going to go in there. And Zoom has brought people much closer. But I know some people in Loudoun, some good people, right? Actually, specifically in this area, I know some people that are great at fit, uh, good fitness coaches, gym owners, trainers. Um, so I can steer people in the right direction if, like, if that's the if we're the gateway to get someone into getting in with someone else, yeah. I already don't like making money, so I'm glad to give business away. <laughs> <laughs> Check them out, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, come come out and see how we don't make money. But yeah, functionalfitnessva.com. We got YouTube, Instagram, all with either FunkFitVA or Functional Fitness VA. So they can uh, check us out and see if we're a gym for them. Or again, we know some people. So 
perfect. Thank you so much for coming in today yeah. and giving us that little uh, motivation <laughs> to get in that gym. You're welcome. Thanks again for having me. I yeah. appreciate it.